All right, and welcome back to the Flopbuster Movie Show live with Tony and Gabe. Actually, it's not live anymore. It's pre-recorded. Not live. Yeah, I forgot about that. We almost went live like about 30 seconds ago, but it was a mistake. Uh, we are here. We're here to talk movies. Gabe, how you doing here today, man? Good, man. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing great. Feeling good. We uh, we got a lot to talk about. I feel like we we got a good amount of movies. It's a giant review extravaganza. It is. Uh, we got to catch up on, let's see, play a playoff basketball. A lot has happened since the last time we talked. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. Lots. Um, yeah, the uh, the Wolves got eliminated. Gentleman sweep, unfortunately. It, did. it was a gentleman sweep. I mean, um, they, they used too much juice on the, the Nuggets, man. They had to, right? Because the Nuggets <laughs> were giving them everything. And, yeah, uh, and Luca just, man, what, what a performance. I, exactly. What a performance by Luca. I mean, I'll, I'll give it up to him. I we've I've said it on this show before. I I don't take anything away from Luca. He's a great basketball player. Um, he's a, could be exciting at sometimes. Um, but he's a lot of that European type they, player, yeah, whether it's yeah. fundamentals and you know. And sure enough, sometimes he does like the we like the good behind the back passes, the flashy stuff. But overall, he's a great solid player. No, no, I agree. I mean, it, I, I think at this point, it's I, I'd be, I know everybody's saying it's the Celtics year, which is it's starting to feel that way. But I wouldn't I be not. shocked if Dallas does the upset. I wouldn't be shocked. I feel like they. I mean, I didn't expect them to get this far. Right. So, let's but get, it makes um, sense. They have two of the best closers. So let's get my Mark uh, Mark Cuban another ring. Oh, I think you were saying let's get Mark Cuban on the podcast. I don't think he we, we I don't think we would have anything to talk about with him. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we would have anything to talk about. With yeah, Mark there's Cuban. nothing. We got nothing to pitch him. We don't know much about you know being a shark and whatnot. So, uh, <laughs> no, we're definitely not sharks. No, I got nothing to pitch him. But you know, but people go on that show with like really stupid ideas too. Right. But he buys their shit anyway. So he does. Uh, okay. Let's let's get into it. Let's talk about the movies. We, we have a lot of movies to talk about, actually. So we do a uh, lot of new movies that we watched. Um, you want to start with the one I watched last night that you? Uh, yes, because you you got to see it. I I was supposed to see this movie last night. Um, I wasn't able to. We didn't make it, but Gabe still saw it. So, mm -hmm. uh, Gabe, run down the uh, synopsis of what you saw. The title. What did you see? I saw in a violent nature. Now, um, all I had to go with was the trailer that you sent me, and off the trailer, I thought that the movie looked like a ripoff of Friday the Thirteenth. Um, so I, I guess I, I went in with a little prejudice because I did think it was a Friday the Thirteenth ripoff, right? I didn't I didn't look at any like any movie. I don't care about reviews. Which sucks because you know we, you and I review movies, right? But I don't like I like to form my own opinions about shit. So I go there and um, I and like I'm laughing halfway through the movie. Like I know you want me to give you a rundown, but it's it, it's it's basically Friday the Thirteenth light. Think any woodsy movie and like make it light. Um, you know the poster says the most violent film or whatever it says. It's I. The kills are okay. Um, I know that there's everybody talking about this certain yoga kill, and it was all right. I'm not going to say it, it, it was bad at all, but, I mean, it just, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense anatomically, like, the way that the kill went. Anyways, I left that movie, and I was like, I was bored for about an hour and 24 minutes, hour and a half. Um, I didn't find anything to say to the least anything that I could say that was like, Oh my God, that was entertaining. Like it was just an hour and a half of this dude walking down trails in the woods. And that's about it. And then the people making the stupidest decisions you've ever seen in the slasher movie. Like if you think like, again, Friday the 13th or Halloween or Freddy Krueger, like those type of slashers, you think those people make stupid mo moves these were like the stupidest moves in like film history. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been hearing that from, I, I don't feel like you're in the minority or anything. I mean, I guess you, uh, it's got like incredibly high reviews coming out of festivals and whatnot. And there's a lot of people that enjoy it, but I'm seeing a lot of pushback from, I guess, more casual moviegoers that are like, oh yeah, this is a neat concept to see something from the killer's point of view. Right. Something that can lose um, 
sustainability very quickly. Dude, it, 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 it very quickly, it, it, like there's, I don't want to ruin the movie for you, but there's like a fucking eight minute shot of a stick in the ground and you're just watching the stick in the ground for eight minutes. <laughs> Now no, I'm excited you, to see it. You, 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 you left, but it's like, and all of a sudden it like it starts breathing, and then the fucking guy emerges from it. But it takes eight minutes for him to fucking emerge from the ground. Oh wow, that's interesting. It, it, uh, I guess I, I guess I'll see. You know, I don't. I think this is a first time filmmaker, so I don't. I don't think I've seen anything they've done. Again, and, and I, I'm not trying to fucking shit in his Cheerios, right? Because obviously, I, he, at least he's done something, right? We we haven't done anything. I mean, he has a movie in theaters that was fucking distributed by Shutter. So, like, yes, that's all great, and I'm happy for him. And I could see the direction that he was trying to take, and I could, you know, I think he's very talented, and I'm sure that he'll get, a, you know, more shit to do. But this movie just wasn't for me. Did you see Skin of Marink? It, 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 did you happen to see that? You saw that one? Uh, the... I, I did that. I did see that. I Is saw it, it on Shutter. Similar to that, better or worse? Skin of Mark, Skin of Mark, or Skin of Marink, whatever the fuck you call it, um, at least had a a different concept. I would say Skin of Marink was a lot. Better. Like I haven't, I haven't reviewed enough violent nature on my letterbox yet. Um, I was going to do it after the show, after I got my thoughts together. Um, I think that gets a one star for me, um, and then I think Skin of Marine got like two, two and a half. Okay, so this one just didn't work. It didn't work for you. It just didn't. And, and you know me, like I've said, you know me. I love to champion movies. I'm a fucking. I'm the king of shitty fucking movies. Like you fucking tell me this all the time. The shittier the movie, the more excited I am for it, the more I hype it up. You know, Blue Beetle for one, right? Um, but fucking... you see, this goes within your very nature because this movie's being praised. <sighs> no, actually not because you, you like a lot of movies that are that are uh, well liked. I, think, I do. I think, you, I think you love most movies you see for the most part. I do. Even bad movies, even like, okay, like, yeah, I know you say my ratings are all over the place on Letterboxd. Even if I give it a two, like, I know a two is a bad rating. I still think two is like, I'm a, I am had a little bit of fun with it. Like I can agree. Yeah. Gone. Like, there's some kind of value in, in seeing it. Oh, yeah. Right. I think like anything that I give uh, under a two is more like, like, I watched it and I was not happy watching it. Um, and that's what this movie is for me. I watched it. I was just not happy watching it. That's fair enough. Yeah. Um, no, I, I wish I, I saw it that I could. I, we could. We could have made this a bit more interesting. Uh, see where I lie, because that's the. Yeah, I guess I'll wait and see, and I'll, I'll give my opinion. Because I, I mean, the trailer looked cool, but like I didn't really have many um, expectations beyond that. Right. No, the only expectation I had was a Friday the Thirteenth copy, and and it's essentially what it is. But it doesn't, like I've said, it doesn't give you any context as to as why this guy is doing what he does. As shitty as the writing is on the Friday the Thirteenth, at least they're entertaining. They're fast paced. They keep you going. The, the 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 campers are interesting. Like nobody is interesting in this movie. Like you don't root for the final girl. Like you you don't root for any of the people. Like is there no a final girl in this movie? Um, shit. Yeah. And just, I mean, like, in service level, right? Like, I there has to be, right? There has to be. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll, we'll move on. We'll, uh, what, what else we'll did you on. see? So Gabe, Gabe, in a violent nature, one out of five, which is, uh, disappointing, but I'll, I'll be seeing it myself. Who knows? I might agree with him. Maybe I come out of it and I go, I fucking love this movie. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll hash it out next episode. All right, I want to talk a little bit because I think you saw this, and then I I never seen it until just the other day. It was uh, everybody wants some? Um, I, I want to talk you, about. I thought that. you've seen that movie. I've never seen it, bro. Like I was sitting the other day, and was it Wednesday? And my day off, and I was just like, let me put something on, and then I see this, and I'm like, oh, let's see who the director is. The director of. Um, Jeez. Days and Confused, Richard Days Linklater. and Confused, yeah. And I was like, all right. And then I had fucking your your all American fucking hero, right? Glenn, Glenn Powell, he's it. Glenn he's Powell. Movie, dude. Yeah. I was like, all right, let me check this shit out, bro. I absolutely fucking love that movie. Like, it's a nice throwback to like comedies. It, it's like it feels like Days and Confused, but like set to like baseball. 
Like, yeah, it's, exa- it's exactly it's exactly that. <laughs> it's exactly that. It was fun. And like you said in the chat, because I think I told you guys, like, oh, I'm watching this movie. And you're like, yeah, well, um, you know, you could tell he was going to be a star in Glenn Powell. And like, absolutely. Just like when he's on screen, it just like oozes charisma. No, I agree. I think that whole cast is hilarious. We uh, I saw that with your cousin. I saw that with Adrian at uh, the legendary Music Box Theater in Chicago. Yeah. On film, they they came out, they presented the movie, they talked about it. Uh, we watched it. The room was just packed, and everybody was just super into it. Um, that's one of my favorite comedies, I, I would say, the past 10 years or so around there. In, in terms of modern comedies, I mean, that's exactly what Richard Linklater does. When he's in that mode, it's very chill and laid back. It's very Texas. Like, if I had to explain, like... Very Texas, that yeah, Texas like, twang. Like days and confused in this, it's just like you hang out with a bunch of guys, they smoke a bunch of pot, and they listen to good music. And if you're and down talk for a that, shit ton about girls, and they talk a shit ton about girls, and they do a lot of partying, they do a lot of partying in that movie. A lot of partying. <laughs> um, but it's it's so much fun, and yeah, no, I agree. Uh, Glenn in that movie is a supporting role, but he's the one that sticks out the most out of everybody who's great in it. Everybody's very, very funny, but there's something about him in that moment that you go, where where have I seen this guy? Or, is he like? There's something more to him, you know. Right. Uh, he takes like Matthew McConaughey role from um, Days and Confused. Exactly. And, and He's very nice. much the, yeah. Like he feels like the Wooderson in a way. Um, right. same, same thing. White Russell. White Russell's like the stoner in it, and like the right. burnout. He's not even supposed to be there too. <laughs> that's um, a guy. That's a guy that like I what like Wyatt Russell from everything I've seen him in from Overlord to now this one with Everybody Wants Some and some other roles that he's had like. Why isn't he a bigger star? Like, why isn't Wyatt Russell like taking that that leap? I've been saying that for years. I've been wondering that myself, and I, I think it, it could just come down to maybe uh, he just maybe hasn't found that right role yet. You know, like he's always in something, right? And you're like, no, he should be the star, and he's always standing out as like the side character, like in Falcon and Winter Soldier. He he's great. He's great in that show, right? And he's you are everything I remember about that show is his story arc. Like everything that he goes through as a character, uh, Overlord. He's not really the main character, but he's no. he's definitely playing a role his dad would have played. He's doing an impression of his dad the entire movie. He's doing right. like Kurt Russell in the thing. Um, even I haven't seen Night Swim, but even I know you guys were telling me uh, uh, he's good in Night Swim. I mean, it's not a good movie, but he's at least like you know he he's good in Night Swim. He makes it watchable. Yeah, there's and there was a show he did called. I think it's the lodge that was very funny on amc he kind of plays like the dude like a stoner surfer right. guy um he was also great in that but i agree with you I, I don't know what it is he just can't um i haven't seen a role of him where he's just the superstar and he can be he's got the charisma to do it and it would be awesome if sony you know actually mm-hmm. matches right. a movie to his potential yeah that, i mean that that'd be fucking great to see i mean because like i said i mean you're fucking Goldie Hawn and fucking, you know, son. Kurt Russell's son. Like, it's, Russell's just son. Like, it's like it's like you're built in a factory of charisma. Like, that's just like. Exactly. You were designed to be a movie star at that point. Kid Hudson's your fucking stepsister. Like, you got yeah. fucking, you, you got fucking talent running. No, know? no, it's, it's true. No, I agree. That's that's awesome that that was your uh, first time watching. I, I could have swore that we talked about it. Like, you had seen it before. No, no, never did. Um, I also saw fucking. Zone of interest. That was interesting. To watch. What did you think of it? Um, that movie's really fucked up. It's re- dude. It is so, uh, like it is so fucked up to begin with, um, because do I like I like I was sitting there and like just legit just talking to myself in a sense where like how could you live a normal life? Because the entire the entire movie there's like a hum in the. In, in, in the background and once in a while you'll hear screams and, and you'll hear like you know yelling and, and gunshots and, and it's basically it's 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 somebody pe- people living their fucking normal life and Auschwitz is happening in the background like mm-hmm. it's it's like fucking they're burning bodies they're killing people fucking people are yelling because they're being fucking burned alive and like the kids are playing in the fucking river and they're playing outside like normal kids would do and the wife's doing fucking laundry it's so fucked up mentally that that actually fucking happened of course and secondly it's like how could you live a fucking life normally with like all that shit going on like 
I don't know. Like it's so fucked up in that sense. It's but it's it's good. I mean, it it won some Oscars, and I mean, it's it's a good movie. It just keeps you thinking about like, could you like, could you like imagine fucking having Auschwitz in your backyard and you're out there fucking swimming in the pool? You know? No, I mean it's it's a it's an interesting concept for sure, and it's it's fucked up to think about. And yeah, no, that's 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 crazy. I saw I was I saw your four star review. I was like, oh, Gabe really really liked it. That's that's cool. Um, but that, that director is, he's great. Have you seen sexy beast? I have not seen sexy beast. Should I see sexy beast? You should see sexy beast. It's a British mob movie about a gangster who just wants to have a nice vacation with his wife in Spain and his old buddy, who's a mob boss played by Ben Kingsley. Who's like this hothead, like a think like a British Joe Pesci type comes over and says, Fuck you. I need you back in London. We're pulling off this job now. And it's like a giant anxiety attack. It's like what uh, Ray Winstone, uh, who is the right hand man of uh, Jack Nicholson in The Departed, plays the main right. character. And uh, it's, a, it's a great like British gangster movie. And I know you like gangster movies. So you got to check this one out. It's, I do like it's gangster different, movies. Different than Zone of Interest is very fast paced and very it feels like a giant like heart attack in a way right where you're just in this character's mind and you're like fuck what's he gonna do because now he's in deep with this person that person and it's very short it's like 80 minutes or something like that so it's a right. very quick movie uh and, right. and just to double back just in case people come at me saying that oh the fuck um you know violent and a violent whatever um you don't like slow burns it's like there's a, there's a difference between slow burns like in a violent nature and like slow burns like zone of interest. zone of interest is a slower movie yeah it's a slower movie like I enjoy slow movies as well so it's so don't come but at I, me you no know, I get what you mean I, though I, I I could tell the type of movie that you like though it needs to grab it it needs to keep you interested in some way like right if, if you're gonna be slow have me thinking have while tension I'm, there's I'm tension getting, there's yes. something yeah. You know, had me thinking about like, oh man, like put myself like have like put myself in that situation, right? Like, oh shit, like could I be living in fucking Auschwitz and just fucking I don't know, going swimming? There's a sense of empathy the there. Because... There's a sense of empathy there, as opposed to like in the violent nature where it's just slow and I'm just sitting there watching a fucking screen and I'm not really thinking about anything because it's just yeah. You want to you want to engage with the material, and it's a killer too. So how much can you really? You know, engage right. with unless I'm a fucking killer around. or a murderer, you know, I don't really fucking care. <laughs> You're just like that's me. That's um, me. There's a few movies that I saw. I saw a lot. I saw a lot this week. I've been watching at home. Um, there's a few I want to talk about. There's a new one that I saw. Gabe didn't see that I've been pushing for him to see. Uh, and I saw that last weekend. Oh, really the quick. Hitman. Uh, uh, yeah, fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll get Hitman out the way, and then I I'll, I want to talk about the other movies that I rewatched too. Uh, so Hitman is also directed by Richard Linklater, who directed Everybody Wants Him. Very different kind of movie to his filmography. Uh, it still has that laid back, cool style and tone. Right. But this is about a mild mannered professor who's a nerd. He's got two cats. He's divorced. He's not, um, he's kind of seen as like this geek. He's not very well respected. Um, on the side, he tinkers with some tech for the local police department. Uh, for them to do sting operations, pretending to be hitmen to incriminate people who hire them. Uh, one day, this cop named Jasper, who's a dirty cop, uh, is suspended from the force. And Gary has to take on the role of the hitman. What he finds out and his team is that, oh, shit, this dude's really good at playing the character. So for the next operations, uh, he starts dunning different disguises. Think like Fletch, right, where he's wearing like yeah. or the master disguise. And he's incriminating people. <laughs> he's he's really good at it. There's there's some where he's like Patrick Bateman. There's one where he's like Tilda Swinton a little bit. There's one that's very like McConaughey. And what happens is he starts to feel like he's becoming a vet, better version of himself because he's so geeky in real life. He's like the nutty professor. So he's like that kind of nerd. Mm. Um, one of the operations, he's hired by a woman named Maddie Masters to put a hit on her husband. And what happens is he does this personality named Ron. Ron is like the Tom Cruise of his personalities, this suave superstar hitman. <clears throat> and what happens within this is that he actually falls for her and tries to, you know, persuade her another way, maybe leading a new life. And they have this 
uh, connection. This movie switches from sort of like silly crime comedy to a rom-com very quickly. And then in the third act, does another gear switch okay. into a dark thriller. Um, this movie is one of the best written comedies I've seen in a very long time. This is probably up there with Furiosa for me as one of my favorite movies of the year. It's like going back between one and two. Um, when we, me and you have talked about before, like the rom-coms of the past and movie star movies where you're just like, fuck this person. Like these people are movie stars. Like you talk about Jennifer Lo uh, Lopez and George Clooney, that kind of vibe. That's what this right. movie has. Uh, there's a great Latina actress in this game from Morbius, the, the, the lady from Morbius. Adria, or I don't know if I'm saying her last name right, Arjona? Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's wrong. Gabe, you, you look up her name and tell me how to pronounce it. All right. Um, I'll, I'll look up her name. But her chemistry with Glenn Powell, like if you thought anyone but you was fun and those two had chemistry, the chemistry they have in this movie makes that look like kid, like uh, just play food, like nothing. It just it makes it look amateur. Um, and the biggest thing walking out of this movie was – me and Victoria were talking about, like, fuck, anyone but you made almost $300 million. If Netflix didn't buy this and it was in theaters, this movie would be a ginormous hit because it's got everything that you would like about comedy, romantic comedy. And again, there's that element of thriller in there. It throws right. a lot of curveballs at you when you least expect it. And it's all anchored by a movie star performance. Glenn is like channeling young Brad Pitt, young Tom Cruise. That's like, this is the movie where you go, Oh yeah, this is that staple movie for you. When I think like George Clooney, what like Ocean's Eleven or Out of Sight, Brad Pitt, you think of like I don't know the Mexican or uh, let's see, Fight Club, right? Like it's, I'm just naming random ones, but you you think of them in those movies, and it's that suave personality that they have. That's him in this movie, and right. it's it's a genuine like crowd pleasing old school romantic comedy, and uh, it's awesome. I'm excited to see it. Like I, I, I know you told me to watch it, and I was gonna watch it, uh, but the only preview that they had was in Wrigleyville, which is about an hour, It'll five, an hour time for me to go see it. Um, and then it was a night game. There was a night game. It was a Cubs night game. Oh my god, the fucking traffic around. It would Wrigleyville. be. It would be awful. But what It'd I will say though is, when I get back there, I got to take you to that theater. We and I think you would like the Alamo Draft House. Oh like, wow! They have great food. They do brunch. They do um, different types of screenings and stuff. It's just a very cool theater. I'm shocked that it was – when you said it, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot Chicago has one of those. Like, I've yeah. never been to the Chicago one. Um, it's legit but. right next to fucking <clears throat> Wrigley Field, like right next door to it. Yeah. I don't even – yeah, I'm trying to think. Is all the games that I went to, especially in 2015, I went to a few games. It's new. I don't even, is it new? Yeah, it's I was about new. to say, it's got to be because it's I've been – a year or two. It's been a year or two since it's opened down in Rio. Okay, so they they yeah they probably opened it after COVID or something. Yeah, um, it makes sense. That that's a good spot for that kind of theater, especially for the type of people that that live over there, like the you know the hipsters and whatnot. They'll appreciate that theater. Um, but definitely, we gotta we gotta go that. Uh, we gotta check that out when I get back there. Um, but yes, Netflix June seventh. So this week, this week. Uh, you'll be able to check it out. Definitely check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, yeah, this is like the type of movie you watch. Like I was telling Victoria, like even my parents and stuff. Like it's a, one of those kind of rom coms. Like I'm like the Fall Guy that we just had, or anyone but you, or just like anybody can enjoy this. Like like it's one of those comedies where their chemistry and right. this movie's sexy as fuck. Like it's very this movie's very horny. It's a very sexy movie, and you buy into it. It's just like there's something very steamy and romantic about it. And again, it in, it's super well written, and Glenn also wrote the movie. So it's right. crazy to think that, like this guy is just a triple threat. So, he wrote, so, so yeah. I mean, Glenn, in, in this sense, it would like. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gay, right? By no means, but fucking, right. you know, Glenn, like, you know, Glenn was like, yeah, well, whatever, I'd get down, you know. Um, I don't know if you've seen on Instagram, uh, he posted, uh, he had a photo shoot with um, one of the industry magazines. I want to say Variety. I may be wrong about this. Maybe okay. Bad, uh, uh, Maybe Deadline? Hollywood Reporter, one of them. Hollywood Reporter, that What's was it, that one. Was. Okay. All right, um, dude, motherfucker, motherfucker was looking fucking sexy. I'm not gonna lie. Like, yeah, like his fucking Chester all out and shit, bro. Like, I was like, all right. Well, I that's see when a movie star. 
That's what a movie Let's... star does, right? Like a proper movie star. You kind of like, yeah, we're straight, but you kind of get like this man crush a bit, right? Where it's just like, I like that guy. I want to see him in other movies. I want to see what he does next. Right. Like, what's he going to do? Yeah. It sort of like reminds me, and th- different different actors, right? And, and different, but like, and I'm obviously a lot older than you, but when fucking Brad Pitt was like busting out in the 90s, like, yeah. you know, he was fucking everywhere. He was the it's blonde boy of, of the 90s. Um, and then he does like Meet Joe Black, um, which is a fucking, it's not a romantic comedy, but it is a romantic movie. And it, he's like, you know, he does a Thelma and Louise and he's like the fucking eye candy for fucking Susan Sarandon and all this yep. shit, right? Um, and then he does the Fight Club in the late 90s. And then before that, it was what? A, a Leg- Legends of the Fall. Legends of the he, Fall. He does all these like very, like you said, the subject matter could be something very serious, but like what he brings on screen is just it's just like oozes that movie star sexiness that you get. And that's what I'm getting from Glenn Powell right now. It's it's that old school Hollywood, you know, blonde sexiness, you know, all American blonde white boy sexiness. Yeah, no, and to tell you the truth, man, I, I think America's kind of fallen for it too, because a lot of people <clears throat> a lot of people I know are starting to figure out who he is. And uh you say anyone but you, that guy from I think, oh, that guy's cool. And even Twisters. And whenever I see that trailer, oh, Twisters, bro. Computers, Twisters? that trailer plays like gangbusters. People just, they, they go, I want to see that movie. So, so just, I know you're telling me about your movies. I'm just going to interject real quick because there's been a lot of reports about the box office <clears throat> failures of this year. Yeah. Um, and granted, there, there hasn't been anything that I would that you and I could say, uh, like that's a fucking that that movie was amazing, or it should have done more money. I mean, maybe Furiosa could have done a little bit more money. Yeah. But we've we've talked about how uh, you know King, you know Kong versus Godzilla felt like a letdown. It didn't seem like it was promoted. Well, uh, of- King of the Planet of the Apes is doing well. Like it's doing about what those movies do. They do about right. four hundred million each. The Fall Guy was the one where it's just like. They, I read a report. The Fall Guy was just too over budget. That if it was, if the movie had come in under a hundred million, mm-hmm. it actually would be doing pretty well at the box office right now. I mean, there's only so much star power can do for a movie that's like, oh, it's a remake of a TV show that people don't know. Like me, like me and you, we love that movie. We appreciate it, and right. it's got something for everybody. But I think for a lot of casuals, it's like, oh, Ryan Gosling's cool, but what the fuck is the fall guy? But I think the box office at this point is waiting for Deadpool versus Wolverine because yeah. that, that's going to do fucking gangbusters. Um, and I don't know why the fuck I just said gangbusters like I'm some old fucking timey man. Anyways, that Let's one. And I think, it. Let's, we'll make it the catchphrase of the show. Gangbusters? It's gangbusters. All right. Yeah. And then uh, Twisters is also going to do gangbusters. Like, Twisters, like I already know, Twisters is. I think it's gonna do well. I think it's like, gonna do very. I well. think that's a movie that middle like people keep forgetting, right? And I feel like I've talked about it before. It's like we live in a bubble because we talk about movies like, oh my god, why is anybody else excited? Hey, you can talk to your coworkers. What are they excited about? What are your family members? Your cousins? Your mom and dad? And if you say a lot of these movies, like, oh yeah, it looks fun, but I'll wait. Or I know it's gonna be on VOD or Peacock now. With Twisters, they've put it front and center. This is a big mega platform <clears throat> blockbuster that's coming in the summer, right? And right. if we shot it in Mill America, we shot it in Oklahoma, we shot it here and there. And everybody that lives there, and they also what they were smart with, and the marketing's been very smart, they dropped the soundtrack and it's all country music from like a bunch of country stars that middle middle of America knows. Um so They've done the right. I feel like they've done the right uh, moves in terms of marketing the movie. I think it's going to be a hit. Right. No, I think it is. Um, the thing is, is and you said something very, very clear or clear there in a sense is that Hollywood, I think, focuses a lot on East and West Coast. Like, yep. The, people forget the the middle. You know, uh, as you know, Midwesterner, right? You're in, you know, right now you're transplanted in the Southwest. But like as Midwesterners, like they always forget about the Midwest. Like every th- every movie has like a shiny East Coast look to it, or a fucking like you know West Coast shine to it. And, and the middle middle m- middle America is completely forgotten about for the most part. Like we know what's going on with movies. We'll watch all you know. We enjoy for the most part everything that we watch. Um, but like for somebody that's from fucking Iowa. You know what? You know they really don't have anything that's gonna fucking for them in a sense. 
No, no, it's true. No, I and that, I think that's why. Listen, that, that's why Top Gun Maverick made so much money. And then people could say, "You're like, well, like, say what you will about the movie. That first one was a classic. We knew it would make money. Tom Cruise was back. It really played for a lot of people in that Southern Belt, from like Missouri down to Georgia, Florida, like everybody, Texas. Of course, it played big in New York, Chicago, L.A." But it was something that spoke to everybody. Right. And it kind of it was a movie that kind of brought everybody together, and it was something that we could all go see. I Absolutely. feel like Twisters, Twisters, I don't think will be as big as that, but I think it can have that similar effect of like, oh, I know this town, I know this place, right. I know where this is, I want to go see this. Bro, I'll, I'll call it right now, and and you're gonna, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'll venture to say Twisters would make over. I'll put the over under on Twisters at eight hundred and fifty five million. I think that's good. I think that's good. I, and I, think I would it's been a rough take year. the over. Yeah, and I think I would take the over on that. The only downside is I think Universal is a producer on the movie. They are. I think they co-produced it with Warner Brothers. And Universal, as of late, the past few years, any other they, movies. They pull them early and put them on two, streaming. Two weeks later, dude, Abigail got suffocated at the box office. Just like tanked. It was out for two weeks. Now you can just rent it on TV. Just like it's fucking crazy what they like. They the fact that they just fucking do that for all those movies. It's just wild. See this. Oh, all right. So, and I don't mean to cut your segment short, but we'll go right back into it. But no, that's, that's the fine. one. That's the one thing that fucking irritates the shit out of me. Is is that is like I'm I'm sorry. I'm not gonna pay fucking twenty five dollars for a movie that was just in theaters two weeks ago. I'm not going to say, oh, man, fucking rent a movie for $25 for me to watch it by myself. Like, I pay for the AMC Stubbs call. Uh, Stubbs Might as well just go right? see it again. Like, at that point, on a better right. format. Right. I, I pay for the Cinemark fucking movie club. Like, I, I pay for so many fucking movie clubs to different theaters, and then you're going to tell me you're going to fucking pull it early, and then you want me to spend $25 to fucking watch it at home? Like, okay, I get VOD works for a lot of people, but, like, unless you're fucking watching it with, like, fucking five, ten people at home, you could justify spending $25. It's just me. I'm not fucking spending $25 to watch a fucking movie at home. Like, I don't care how great my fucking setup is, and it's pretty sweet. I'm not going to spend $25 to watch it at home. No, I think it's fair enough. And I, I think it's rare if I even try to think. And there hasn't been many movies. There's a few where it's like, oh, we went to VOD early. Yeah, I'll buy it. I loved it. But at the same time, it kind of you feel guilty a little bit because it's like, why is it on VOD early? Right. Like, why I'll, would they I'll, I'll rent it for five bucks, but I ain't fucking renting it. Some some of these rentals are going for like twenty twenty five dollars. I'm like, what the fuck? Sometimes thirty bucks. Yeah, yeah, some of them, I think like, I think Dune Two is thirty dollars at one fuck point. Like that. I just saw Dune Two on fucking HBO. Then I was upset. I was like, I should have gone to the fucking theaters like everybody told me to go see this. See, told you, man. Told you. Um, uh, but yeah, no, so, uh, so give me what else. What else have you watched? Oh, yeah, yeah. So Hitman was awesome. I think everybody should go see it. Like I said, my number, maybe number two favorite movie of the year for sure. Um, then I saw Summer of Sam, Spike Lee's movie. Yes. The, uh, it's been on streaming Johnny apps. Labs. And, you know, this is a movie I saw years ago. And I remember enjoying but I loved it even more this time. And this is a movie that's seen as like a lesser Spike Lee movie. It's very controversial. A lot of people don't like it. And I I watched it this week. Even Victoria watched the second half of it with me. And she was kind of, she was kind of captivated by uh, Mia um, Servino's performance, uh, Mia Servino, right. uh, her performance as, as the wife, uh, Paul Servino's uh, daughter. Uh and I, the whole cast, I just thought was awesome. And it really just, this is a movie that puts you in the place of what was New York like in the, in the summer 70s. of 77. Yeah. It's super hot. There's a heat wave and there's a killer on the loose. You're in a small Italian American neighborhood and there's uh, Catholic guilt. There's uh, machismo and pride right. and toxic masculinity there's these guys running around and it's like you have these different perspectives of adrian brody who's become like this punk and he's right. like this sid vicious knockoff and then you have johnny legs is like a tony monero type who's this really guilty guy who cheats on his wife a lot and he's a hairdresser so it paints the picture of what was time like for these people 
and you, you're off to the races. You have to be really invested in those characters to like this story. And you have some son of Sam lurking in the background, creeping into the neighborhood. Yeah, killing David, this woman Berkowitz. And stuff. David Berkowitz. And uh, I thought the movie, like, I, I think it plays so well now. And I think it's honestly, for me, one of Spike Lee's strongest. I'm most ambitious because it's a big movie. It's, it it's very long. It's, it's a long movie. But the costume design, the cinematography, the music, everything is like really top notch and the whole time i was thinking fuck man i think people were maybe a little too rough on this when it came out i, I feel like a lot of people should give it a second chance they were and one of my favorite performances in that movie and, and you're gonna be surprised when i tell you it, it was not johnny legs it was actually adrian brody i think adrian brody um really stood out for me in that, in that he movie. does yeah you know never mind the hair and the said vicious stuff just just he had a very strong performance in that movie so um, no, he does, and and it's like it's a movie about identity, for, because you have these these guys, and the, it's 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 really that's what it's, the movie comes. It's down sort of to. like adults. It's like an adult coming of age. Like it's not like even like a kid's coming of age story or a teenager coming of age. It's more like adults, like like you said, finding their identities in their fucking twenties. You know. Yeah. Still, because sometimes I mean, even in real life, I mean, fuck, you could be forty and still trying to figure out what the fuck you want to be or do. You could still come of age at any fucking. Era, no, shoot, you could change who you are and whatnot. Um, and it's like these two different perspectives uh, on that. And John Lucasamo is great in the movie. Like yeah. he's like truly great. Like they're convincing you that he's Italian, which is like you kind of have to get past that. <laughs> but I mean, if you just if you take it and um, you know, just just John Lucasamo, 1970s sort of character, I mean, he's he plays it well and the, the anxiety and that fear that. and that guilt. Um I think he, he's he's awesome in this movie. And the highlight of this movie for me uh, is that car scene when they leave the orgy and it's him and his wife and Dancing Queen by Abba's playing and it's a screaming match. That's the, the boiling point of the movie right there for me. Right. Um, but this movie is almost like a powder keg. It's like everything. It's like he lit a fuse of a bomb and you're just watching it sizzle until the very end where it just explodes. This movie yeah. just explodes. And so, uh, yeah, I thought it was... It was awesome. Uh, I I'd seen it before and I liked it, but I don't know what it was this time. I uh, I liked it even more, and I think it went up for me in terms of spikes of movies. Sometimes, like you could like you could like a movie and you watch a movie and you like it, and 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 it's fine, right? So you, you like the movie, but then sometimes you're just in the it's like the perfect combination. You're in like the right headspace. You're mm -hmm. you know you're you're you know you're eating the right thing or you're drinking the right thing. You have got your feet up, propped up just perfectly. And that movie just fucking hits even better than it did the first time around. And I think it, that's what it is. And in perspective too, right? Like you, you get older and sometimes you like something you can't relate to something. And then maybe you can't, maybe you could see like, Oh, I could see all these characters right. point of views and why they feel this way. So yeah, that's a, that's a movie that's definitely rewatchable. Anybody that hasn't seen summer of Sam, it's, <clears throat> it's, if you like movies like Zodiac, it's, it's very much in that style. Absolutely. Uh, and then quickly, yesterday morning, me and Victoria rewatched Transformers. Yeah, we're always talking about Transformers every fucking every week. It's, we talk it's, a little bit of Transformers. Hey, it's summer, man. You got to put it's a summer. It's a summer classic. You have to put that on, you know. So yeah. we, we watched that. I have the 4K uh, collection. I think you own that collection too, don't you? Dude, I own the 4K collection and the Blu-ray collection. Yeah, and no, I mean, it's these fucking movies, phenomenal. Yeah, they look great. Uh, so maybe watch the second one and then the third one. I, I have not seen the Michael, uh, not the Michael, uh, the uh, Mark Wahlberg ones. I just, I, I think at that point I'd lost interest in the series and then like, I just didn't go out. Yeah. Like, so like know. four and five, you haven't seen four and five, which I mean, they're not the strongest. You definitely miss a little bit of a, a of shy in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're still entertaining. Again, Should I are they worth it? Should I, if I'm going through the series right now, should I put them on? As a Transformers fan, I can't, I'm sorry, because I, you know how much of a homer I am for Transformers. So I'd probably be the wrong person to ask this because I'm going to tell you, yes, okay. they're not the greatest in the franchise, but they are entertaining enough where you're like, okay, you know, and, and you, as a fan of the franchise, I, yeah, I like them, you know, but again, I, I'm a homer for them. Um, if you're going to skip them, Go directly to fucking uh, Bumblebee. I, I don't think you've even seen Bumblebee. I don't think. 
you know, I, I watched half of Bumblebee and I liked it. I forgot what I was doing that day. I think I was running errands or something and I stopped it and I never went back to it. So I just got to watch it from the beginning. I think I think um, Transformers Extinction, the one that came out last year, which is probably better than both of the Mark Wahlberg ones. Um, but I mean, you got I mean, if you're if you're running through the series, you might as well just watch the Mark Wahlberg ones. Yeah, I like that last one. It was fun. It was the, the 90s one, right? It was in the 90s. Yes, the nineties. The yep. I, I thought it was yeah, yeah. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So that was really what I watched. Uh, Black Dynamite. I watched last night. That was a lot of fun. It's a very silly movie. Right. Um, Furiosa. I want to talk about Furiosa. Oh yeah, we still got. Wait, before we talk about Furiosa, I just want to do a special shout out um, to Atlas. The uh, I watched that, and the best part of that was. Jennifer Lopez and yoga pants. Like the final scene made the entire fucking <laughs> two hour long movie just fucking worth it. That just fucking shot of like J Lo and yoga pants. I was just like, oh, it was, it was, it was one, it was magical. I'm happy that it made you I'm happy that it made you happy. Yeah. Um, That's why that, happy. listen, I gave it three, like, hold on. This is legit my review on, on Atlas. It was three stars. And then I said, there's a shot of J-Lo in yoga pants towards the end, and it makes sitting through this worthwhile. That's it. Three stars just because of J-Lo's ass <laughs> and yoga pants. That's fair enough. No, I, I think that's fair enough. Yeah, I, why do they make these movies? Now, you I, notice, do you notice Netflix makes a bunch of movies and that like have big Hollywood stars, but they look just like, I don't know, they look like video game cutscenes, and then nobody talks about them. Like, I thought that movie with Millie Bobby Brown, Damsel or whatever, I saw people talking about like, didn't this movie come out like three years ago? Didn't they do this movie? Was it on Hulu or something? And I guess it was just a movie that looked kind of similar. Right. With uh, Jody, jo, uh, Joey King. You, right. see, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Did, did, are they the same movie or did you see Damsel? Did you see the other one? Like, I, I've not seen either one of them. I, I'm like, I'm not. I don't know. I haven't seen either one of them, and I don't know about Millie Bobby Brown as far as an actress is concerned. I think she's fine. Um, I, I, I like Joey King. I think she's a lot better actress. Yeah, no, she's a, she's a great actress. Yeah, she's right. Than than Millie Bobby Brown, and I think I I think as far as like once Stranger Things is over, I don't really see none of them besides the guy that's Mike. I know he's done a lot of horror stuff, and I think he's the only one that maybe has a future in it. But like, I don't think anybody else does. I think they just got they're, they're getting the money. Unfortunately, it's it's one of those things where they, it was like, you know, it worked when they were kids and whatnot. But I don't I don't see any of them really going on beyond that. Well, maybe um the the girl that plays Max, she's done the Fear Street movies. Oh yeah yeah yeah, and she did the way I yeah, okay yes her yes um, she's great she's great um but like. Uh, uh, the dude that plays Lucas, the the dude that plays uh Will Bill Myers, whatever the fuck, dude, uh, the <laughs> whatever the fuck his name is. No, I I agree with you, and I wonder what Netflix's game plan is going to do, right? Because it's like they're able to stay afloat because of Stranger Things. Who the fuck is watching? I'm very curious who's actually watching movies like Atlas, <clears throat> besides you watching it for yoga pants. Because they're okay, their sci fi action movies just look like Pacific Rim knockoffs, right? They and do then you look get like Pacific, they look like those fucking black. So, so here's the thing you know who's watching these is the same people that want the blockbuster and just picked up the fucking B movies of like blockbuster hits. Like, you know, you have Transformers, but hey, kids, let's watch fucking Transmorphers. But now they star big Hollywood actors who are coming in for a right, paycheck. Right, because they're coming in for a paycheck. It's it's that. It's fucking B-movies at Blockbuster, but it's Netflix making them. I, I don't understand. Where are they getting the money to make these? They That's claim they're, they're bankrupt, that they're going down, and oh, well, we don't put never, stuff in Never mind and... you, right? It's You have Jennifer Lopez. You had, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, so Simu Limu or Simu Lee, whatever. Simu uh, Lu or I don't know. Whatever, you know, fucking Shing 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 Shai. You have fucking Shing Shai in there. Yeah. And then you have um Homie, who's a really good fucking actor. Um, the black dude from fucking oh, God, I forgot his name. Actually, I have it up here. My bad. Um, he's really good. I actually quite enjoy him. Sterling K. Brown. Oh, yeah, he's um, awesome. I love Sterling. He's awesome. Yeah. I love Sterling. 
Um, so you have three huge actors for all intents and purposes. I don't know how this movie made any money or how Netflix is making any money off this movie. They've definitely had to pay out, you know, money for that. Uh, but it was directed by fucking The Rock's best friend. No, no. It, it was uh, the dude, uh, Brad Payton, did uh, San Andreas, Rampage, oh, Journey, he, he did Journey 2 with The Rock. All three movies oh, wow. with The Rock. Wow. I didn't, I've never saw, um, <clears throat> I never saw Journey 2. I like the first one, though. I, I like never, it with, I, Brand, with Brandon Fraser. Yeah, I think that's the only one I watched. I didn't see Journey Yeah, that, one, that one's fun. Um, but yeah, I, I, like you're right. I think, um, I, I don't know who's watching these besides me and, you know, but it's, I don't know. Like I said, it's worth it or maybe just fast forward all the way towards the end and then you'd see J-Lo's ass in yoga pants. And then Well, the, the problem with it. your thing, dude, is that like their movies can be successful and then they could just put it on the app. But they're so strict on no We'll put it in theaters, but we will never tell you it's in theaters. We'll play it in like 50 theaters just so you shut up about it. And then we'll put it on the app. Well, this and might be an extended episode because, right, you and Victoria both posted um, what the fucking CEO said and said, oh, Barbie and Oppenheimer would have been as big um, on our platform as it was in theaters. And I call fucking bullshit. Yeah, That's just fucking time. bullshit. Like, there is no way fucking Barbie and Oppenheimer would have been as big on fucking Netflix. Like, as much as I love, and you give me a lot of shit for it, as much as I love being able to fucking binge watch a show, if you put Barbie and Oppenheimer on Netflix, those movies are forgotten within two weeks. Two weeks, I would say. Yeah, and the thing is, both those movies, when you saw them, they both made sense why you saw them on a large format. Right. Like, I saw Barbie and Dolby Vision, and it looked amazing. And it was made to be that way. It was made because of the colors and the expanded format and Barbie land and the all the, the original soundtrack by all the different artists. Oppenheimer, you needed to see it in IMAX or a large studio right. screen. And it was very intense. The sound was amazing. The cast was wonderful. Can you imagine watching either of those on a cell phone for your first time? It just it would be stupid. No. Like, why would you do that? Exactly. Exactly. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck these people in Hollywood are smoking, um, but I want whatever they have because I want to be. I want to be as deluded as they are. You know, everywhere from like I think if I think like if you own or you run, you're the CEO of a fucking movie studio. Like you got to just be dumb as shit. Like no, I I would say that like a lot of them are pretty fucking stupid. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway. And it's not like we're we're crying about like oh give us stuff that we want. It's just like no, just put your stuff in theaters. That's literally just like what people are willing to pay right. just put it in, in on the big screen. Listen, I know your setup. You know my setup, right? I have a nice fucking seventy five inch TV. I got the fucking surround, and I got the lights, and I got the fucking four K player. Like I got a nice setup. You have a nice setup. We like watching movies at home. Yep. But I think on initial run, like you know, you gotta watch it in theaters, like especially like an Oppenheimer or Barbie or, you know, when we talk about Furiosa, like you need the large format. You need the fucking sound. You need your fucking fucking ass cheeks to fucking clap when the fucking sound goes off, when you get that fucking deep bass. Like, yeah, as much as we could have a nice setup, it's it's good for, you know, second, third watches. Like, what do you think like The Matrix and um, The Mummy were so successful on re-releases just a couple months ago? It's because as good as they are, they're just better in the theater. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. there's, there, it's just things are better at the theater, at the movies, at the theaters. No, I agree, and it's um, it's a shame because they, they Netflix has the new Beverly Hills Cop, and I know a lot of people are excited for that. And even my parents stuff like, why isn't it in theaters? Like, why didn't they put it? Is it going to be bad because it's in, not in theaters? It's just like, no, Netflix bought it. So now it's going to be on the Netflix app. You'll have to watch it there. That one's not even getting a limited like opening weekend release. It's just going to be straight in the app, um, which is a shame because that movie's it's fun. It's it's a really right. oh shit, uh, it's it's a really fun movie, and um, I think it'll uh, I think it'll do well. I think people will like it. It, it sucks because you want to see an Eddie Murphy movie on a big screen. Yeah, I want to see the it. big. I want to yeah. see the big old Eddie Smile with that. You know. Yeah, no, you get that, but now you're going to watch it in your living room on 4th of July weekend, which, hey, it can't be too bad. Now you can watch it before the barbecue, get up early, put it on, and 
you know, you have well, a nice way to start your day. Fourth of July is Independence Day. I've always maintained that tradition for like fucking since the movie came out. I watched Independence Day on Fourth of July. And just Independence Day, that's it. Yeah. All right. There you go. All right. Let's talk about Furiosa. Then. Let's talk about Furiosa. Uh, wrap this up, Gabe. Well, uh, what is Furiosa? Uh, run it down. Furiosa. It is the prequel or the story. Uh, Furiosa, played by. Um, uh, Charlize Theron uh, back in uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Um, so you basically get her, you know, her 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 origin story in a sense. Um, you know how she got where she got with uh, with a Mortem Joe. Um, that's basically the rundown for it. I mean, you know what it is. It's it's a great story um, about her trying to find her way back home from she was a child and lot. I want to say it's as equal to, or to, or even as good as Fury Road, um, maybe even better. I would maybe argue, um, just because the action sequences are there that you expect from Fury Road, but you also get more of the explanation, and and that's what I like. I, th- I think I think I'm a I, I'm a sucker for origin stories. It's like even when I watch like porn, I like the beginning. Because I I like the explanation of how did they, how did that dick end up in that fucking ass? Yeah. Like I like I like I like the ex- exposition. Where, I like she the order, where did she order the pizza from? Where did she order like, the pizza from? Like, yeah. oh, why are you at the wrong address? Or or why do the pipes need cleaning? Like I like origin, I like exposition, I like to know why we're there, like why we're doing the shit in a sense. And that's what I get from Furiosa. That's what it is in the sense. Um so yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I I agree with you. This is I said it before. My favorite movie of the year. Uh, I was enthralled the first time, but uh, I was also tired when I first saw it because I saw it on very low sleep, and we did a double uh, feature back to back. We went right. to see Furiosa, ate, took a quick break, and then immediately saw Hitman. So it was like you know with like six hours in the theater. So I I, I watched it. I loved it, and I said I want to watch it again because I I know there's things I'm missing, uh, just because it's such a big movie too. So I re- rewatched it um, a couple days ago, and it solidified like, yeah, this is the best movie I've seen this year. Like, this is a big, uh, epic blockbuster filmmaking. A uh, barely any dialogue in this movie. It's all just visual. It it's is all visual. visual the visuals are fucking stunning. Yeah, and Chris Hemsworth is incredible as the villain Dementis. Just a, a pure highlight in this franchise that's already had great villains to begin with. Right. And Anya Taylor Joy does so much with like forty lines of dialogue. She barely talks in this movie. It's all emotion and it's all um, it's all visuals. And he's a madman when it comes to this kind of filmmaking. If you thought Fury Road, where Max has like ten lines of dialogue, was you know just action heavy, it's this big journey, this odyssey. This movie is like a giant myth. It's a fable. It's the right. story of her as a child and her journey back home, and. Everything about it just worked for me. I loved all the characters and going to Bullet Town, Gas Town, um, everything about it. And shit, I watched it twice. Both times just went by like that. It's the longest Mad Max movie, but for me, it just felt short. It was I was so lost in the world. Uh, even the new characters, like Jack, uh, her love interest towards the middle of the movie, uh, he's great. That that Tom Burke is is right. incredible in this, and he's only in it for about twenty minutes, but. He's awesome. And we get this 15 minute long action sequence with those two. And then we get another action sequence with them. And the action is great. Uh, the stunt work, everything you'd expect from a Mad Max movie, those things are awesome. But then you get the added bonus of like uh, those first 15, 20 minutes you're with her mom and her mom. And you see her perspective. And I thought she was a great character and a highlight for me in this film as well. And um, everything about it just it works on a massive level and it's like you said you go to the movies to see just big pieces of film and this is a movie that just like i can't imagine watching this on netflix like like why the fuck would you want to do that right right like i said i mean it's it's fine on your second third fourth viewing watch at home but first viewing like i watched it at uh cinemark their XD screen, which is their yeah, their 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 IMAX, yeah, their IMAX, and oh my god, it was just like, like I said, my fucking cheeks were fucking clapping for every time the fucking explosions were happening and the car chases. I mean, you know, when you watch Mad Max, a Mad Max movie, you're there for for a lot of the times for the car chases, uh, the cool what they've done 
like the the fix up, you know, how they fixed up the cars and stuff like that. Like you get yep. you get it all here. You know, you get the fucking big ass fucking monster trucks fucking shooting fucking flames. Yep. Which which a little thing, it's not that it bothers me. It's just a little fucking little side note there. Like if you're in a fucking dystopian world where you're you need gas and gas is at an all time high, why would you be riding around in a fucking car that shoots fucking flames out the you know the engine? <laughs> Just because it looks cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know. Trust me, it fucking looks awesome and it's amazing. I'm not even fucking criticizing because of that. I'm just like, I'm just sitting there watching. I'm like, okay, you need gas, but yeah, your fucking car is like fucking shooting out fucking flames. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand half of the decisions some of these fucked up people make in these movies. You know, they're, like they're into bondage. They got like nipple piercings, gas mask on their dick and stuff. Like, they're just fucking crazy, dude. Like, they're, they're, they're insane. It reminds me of my cousin, I, uh, uh Sky Saturday night. Okay. Like he 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 do like he's like he'd be like like uh you ever seen uh Deuce Bigelow with the cop? He's like, hey, you want to see something? And then fucking it's like whips out his fucking dick. That's like Adrian. He's like, you want to see something? And fucking gas mask on his fucking dick. <laughs> he would be a he would be an interesting. Uh, I think he could he could survive the wasteland. I think he he can. Yeah, he'd probably be part of Dementis's crew. Could you survive the wasteland? Would you be? Would you? I think I would be more of like those fucking two characters at the beginning, like when they steal Furiosa. Like, oh, they make fun of me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, you just, I don't know. I don't think I would. I'd probably be. I'd probably die and be one of the first to die, like before it all collapses. Like in those initial, like I think they have like the nuclear war or whatever. I'd probably die there. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, I don't think I'd okay, make it to the wasteland. Oh, okay, let's say you don't die. Right. Let's say you don't die in a nuclear yeah. war and you're in the wasteland. Would you survive the wasteland? Probably, but I'd I'd probably I, not as like an animal or anything like 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 these guys are. I w- it would be like I'd be in the green place. You'd be in the I'd, green I'd, place. I'd be with the many mothers, you know. Like I would be there and chilling, S- suckling at the teeth business. of the many of the many mothers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, you would probably be like the organic mechanic. You would be feeding, you know, your cousin blood sausages and stuff like that. I mean, from humans, who knows? No, no. I was just like, man, I was like, now they're doing carnivore shit. I was like, all right. Well, I guess that's what we're doing here. Uh, but no, this this is, I mean, if you love Mad Max, I, I if you love movies, I, I couldn't really see how you don't walk out of this going, man, that, that was awesome. That was just a feast for the eyes. Like, that's why right. I paid the ticket. You exactly. Know, so. I think, uh, um, yeah, I think I, I think it's like you said. Um, it has everything, though. You know, you have the love story, you have the action, the car, the car chases, just about everything that you're looking for in a movie. It has it with, and then very little dialogue from your main character. Like she, Anya kills it. Like I know there was a lot of apprehension when she got cast, and how you can you replace Charlize? And you know, dude, Anya just kills it. She, she yeah, she, she's awesome. She's for the most part every role that she's had, she's killed. Like she's a great actress. Uh, no, I don't even know why there was even some um, apprehension about her either. Because I mean, she sounds like Charlize Theron too a, a little bit. In the, I, I, I'm guessing that's got to be on purpose. You got to have some kind of like you have to in your head know this person becomes that person. And the whole time I was watching the movie, I was like, yeah, I could see this is the Furiosa that we see. At the beginning of Fury Road, like right. I could totally tell, this is Infurator Furiosa that we get to that point with. Um, so yeah, this was a big win for me. I'll see it again. I know it's not doing that great at the box office, but the way I broke it down to people too is that like we keep looking at those numbers, and yes, the studios are fucking up by putting stuff on streaming. But Fury Road wasn't a big hit. Fury Road just had a lot of good word of mouth and a lot of Oscar buzz. So Warner Brothers was like, all right, well, let's green light another one. And George already had the story for this. I think we're just lucky. We got to live in a time where Water Brothers gave this man $300 million to make two new Mad Max movies on that scale with like the best effects in the world and the best stunt work and stuff. So I don't need another one. If they make another one, I'll take it. But if this is where it ends, he's always been great at starting a story, ending a story, and it's a complete meal. And that's it. Right. They're self-contained because as much as let's just say for some for some reason you didn't see um Fury Road, you could go watch Furiosa without needing the context of yeah, Fury of Road. 
Right? 100%. Same, you can watch Fury Road and not see Furiosa. You can watch all fucking individual of the fucking Mel Gibson, you know, Mad Maxes. And still, like you said, every movie is sort of self-contained within that story. You know, it's it's they're equal to the greater sum of their parts in a sense, yep. right? Like it's 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 each movie you could just watch one of them and then that you're good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a watch though. Yeah, no, this this was awesome. Uh, I think I mean by the time anybody sees this, you probably have seen the movie. So if you haven't, make sure you go see it. Uh, Gabe, is there anything else you want to add before we start closing up? Um. No, um, no new music, real quick, because I know we we we've talked about music. Uh, Eminem oh, yeah. has new music. Um, new song dropped this morning. I shared it in our group chat. How um, was it? I didn't watch it. Yet. <laughs> you didn't watch it. Um, it's actually pretty good. It's uh, it's like a sequel to um, um, God, what, I forgot the name of the song. Anyways, it's it's pretty good. Um, it's called Great. um, the new song is called Houdini. I heard that uh. I heard that he disses Megan Thee Stallion. He doesn't diss her. He says that he wants to collab with her. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, that he wants fun. to that collab with her. Um, he 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 still stays uh, dissing uh, Machine Gun Kelly because you know fuck that motherfucker. He's like talking about the devil and putting the fucking horns on it. You know how the Machine Gun uh, Kelly does yeah. it. I'm like, yeah, fuck that motherfucker. Well, he got chased out the rap scene, and then he got chased out the like the emo scene. So what the fuck does he do? Just they. Megan Fox, I guess. I mean, what else could you do? Like, if I'm dating Megan Fox, I wouldn't do anything just but just like be by her side the entire time. That dude, how the fuck did he? Uh, whatever. <laughs> how? <laughs> what? Like, I mean, he must have. Maybe he's a like you know off camera has like this wonderful personality. He's a great person and whatnot. But I don't think so. <clears throat> I, th- I think in like for a lot of people, he's got like there's nothing. There's nothing that gravitates you towards like his music or his acting. I mean, nothing. I nothing not, nothing gravitates me towards um his his music at all. Even when it was um hip hop, um I didn't gravitate <clears throat> towards his music. He goes emo, I hated it even more because it's like it's the same reason. <sighs> Anyways, I don't want to get into it because I could go all fucking day about no, this. No, man, but I'll we'll check out the song. Uh but uh yeah, um check it out. That's good. Perfect. Uh, make sure if you haven't already, guys, make sure to like the episode. That really helps us out. Just hit that like button, please. I beg Share you. Share it. Comment. Subscribe. Uh, new changes are coming to the show soon. A couple we'll months. have an announcement. We'll have an announcement on that <clears throat> in the coming months. So stay tuned to that. We're, it's going to have a whole new look and stuff. So, uh, yeah, this has been the Flopbuster Movie Show. Thank you all for watching. Gabe, anything you want to say before we sign out? Nope. Nope. Just make the mess. The, the, the cheeks clap. Exactly. Go to Furiosa. It'll make your cheeks clap. That's it, man. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.